So what's your thought on this? Well, look, we look at a lot of data. The, uh, Chair Yellen and all Federal Reserve officials keep emphasizing that we're data dependent. And every day more data comes in. We're paying attention to markets. And the good news is in Minneapolis and in all of the banks, we've got very strong teams of economists that are chewing on this. And we put it all together and, you know, we'll wait and see. So data dependent, once again, we've heard that before. So let's, yeah, let's, you let's, know what, let's, you've, always, you've always been data dependent. Yeah. So I mean, like, that's a, I'm giving that a no. <laughs> yeah. Well, uh, you could yeah. try again. But you're making some news in some other places recently. You gave a talk at Brookings Institution yesterday. That's talking right. about too big to fail and suggesting that, the, that at least your part of the Fed needs to take a look at whether there has to be more regulation. Dodd-Frank didn't go far enough. Tell us what drove you to this, Neil. Yeah, so look, we all remember the crisis, 2007, 2008. I was in the middle of it running the TARP program. We hated that. We hated that we had to bail out the banks. And I think Americans across the political spectrum hated that as well. We see the anger in the American people still today. None of us wants to be in that situation again. So Dodd-Frank was passed very quickly because they wanted to reform the financial system, which I supported. But the more transformational measures were taken off the table. Things That's like what? like breaking up the banks or putting so much capital in the big banks that you turn them into utilities so they virtually can't fail. There are a number of other options. Well, here we are six or seven years later, and in my view, we've done some good. The banks are safer, they do have more capital, they've got deeper liquidity, but we have not taken the risk of a bailout off the table. If a number of banks ran into trouble at the same time, I think policymakers today would be forced to bail them out. But you're never going to take risk out of the system. Maybe you take it out of banks' hands, but somebody is going to be left holding the bag. And it's those investors who have risky assets. And it's insurance companies. That's 401k. So it's not like it's evaporating. It's just going to someone else. I agree, but it needs to be distributed in a way that it's safe. So in the late 1980s, a thousand little savings and loans failed in the SNL crisis. That was terrible for those firms. But there was no risk of an economic collapse. In the tech boom in the late 1990s, we then had the crash, devastating for Silicon Valley. But once again, no risk of an economic collapse. That's where we need to be. I think the concern is that uh, banks are still too big to fail. In fact, a lot of people say too bigger to fail now, right? After we injected uh, $13 trillion into the financial system to save banks, uh, total assets of the six biggest have climbed to about $10 trillion. Uh, check this out, a custom uh, chart that Hillary made for me. You can see that we were only at about $8 trillion before the financial crisis, and, and only about 9 when we came out. So they continue to get bigger and bigger. I will say that this is different for different banks. So JP Morgan, Bank American, Wells Fargo are the ones that really have grown. Yeah. Goldman Sachs, uh, Morgan Stanley and City have actually gotten a little smaller. So, so Neil, this is a fascinating chart, but I wonder if it asks the right question. If you compare the size of U.S. banks to the size of GDP in the United States as opposed to other countries, actually our banks are relatively smaller than other banks. That's correct. So this is not just an American problem. This is true all around the world. And we can't, you know, in the U.S., we can't control what other people do in other countries. What I'm saying is we need to be honest with the American people about the risk that still exists in our financial system, take action to make our banking system safer, and then hopefully we can encourage other countries to follow along. But, but there's less risk than there was. Do you agree with that? I do agree with that. But the question is this. I don't want the American people to think that we have solved too big to fail when I believe in my heart we have not solved it yet. And that's why I'm, I'm standing up and speaking forward. Because if I weren't standing up, I wouldn't be doing my job. I guess what I don't understand, though, it was the Treasury Department, Hank Paulson's Treasury Department, that during the crisis pushed these takeovers, WAMU, Bear Stearns. Those were the contributors to making these banks even bigger today. That's absolutely true, and I was in the middle of that, so I'm not absolving myself of responsibility. I take responsibility for that. In the midst of that terrible crisis, we had to make the problem worse by encouraging these mergers just to stabilize the system. We knew at the time hey, if we can stabilize the system, that's going to be a short-term victory. We're still going to need to deal with too big to fail long-term. I just don't want to have the future Treasury Secretary, the future Fed Chair, 20 years from now or 50 years from now, back in the situation we were in, having to make those terrible choices. But then is it fair that the, the, that the populist opinion is still so anti-banks and banks continue to pay fine after fine tied to acquiring these other banks when it was the Treasury Department that pushed them to do it. Look, I understand those concerns and those are very fair, but I also understand the concerns on Main Street, right? M Main Street was devastated by this. 
People, it's not just people who bought homes and bought mortgages maybe they couldn't afford. When this manifested itself into a deep recession, a great recession, people lost their jobs and that wasn't fair. And so there's a lot of anger in the country, which I understand. Yeah, well, zero interest rates has hurt Main Street. Zero interest yeah. rate has helped banks and hedge funds and money managers, asset holders, as their assets have risen over the last five years and mom and pops on the street haven't gotten their wages up. Uh, Obamacare has made it difficult for them to hire more people into small businesses. I, I agree that asset valuations have been helping the wealthy more than they've been helping middle class and lower income. Agree 100%. And that's what's so tough about coming out of this terrible crisis. You, you all know the Rogoff and Reinhardt book about sure. this time is different and how hard it is to recover from these banking crises. That's exactly why we don't want this to happen again, because it ends up not just being Wall Street who's hurt, it ends up being Main Street, and they're paying for year after year after year. So I think you're making my point for me. 